Welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to look at one of the most popular stocks that have, are been trading now in the stock market, and that is Carnival Cruise. So there are a few industries that have been hit significantly hard by the coronavirus. Carnival Cruise is one of those. So to this uh, portfolio, we can basically put all the airline stocks, the hotel stocks, restaurant stocks, and of course also the um, the cruise liners. So there are uh, a couple of cru cruise liners um, stocks that I could have picked, but I chose to pick the company that I think uh, I think that its financials are technically the best. So um, so. I'll give my take on the other um, cruise liners um, at the end of this video. But in this video, I'm going to discuss whether or not uh, CCL is a good stock to buy or if it is a terrible stock to buy. So in these videos, um, I give these stocks grades. So one star means that this stock is uh, significantly overvalued. Uh, two stars means that this stock is uh, fairly overvalued. Three st stars means that this stock is uh, neutral and you should just probably just hold on to this stock. Four st stars means that this stock is uh, fairly undervalued. And five stars means that this stock is significantly uh, undervalued. So... Before you continue, we continue, I have to say that this is my personal uh, analysis of this stock. Everybody that buys and sells the stock should make their own uh, technical uh, analysis or their valuation of a stock before they purchase or uh, sell a stock. First, we have to look at what Carnival Cruise Line does what is technically the product that it provides to uh, its customers and of course it is uh, trips with these amazing ships to be fair to honest i absolutely love cruise ships i love everything about cruising and probably sometime in the future i would love to go on one of these amazing ships however there's a massive problem for not just for Carnival Cruise, but all of the cruise line industry, and that is the coronavirus. So this virus started in China, but it was technically the cruise liners that became one of the main epicenters, and, and it was constantly on the news, and especially this ship, the Diamond Princess. Um, for the people, uh, the customers that were on this ship, this must have been horrible, and uh, in the beginning, uh, countries would not accept these um, the Diamond Princess to uh, uh, and and the passengers on the on the Diamond Prison Princess to basically uh, go back home. They were technically living um, on the ship as prisoners in their cabinets, and this just became a horrible, horrible story for the entire uh, cruise line industry. And since then, uh, we have seen all the cruise line stocks just plummeted because at the moment, they don't have any revenue. They don't have any passengers. And of course, that is going to um, be a significant um, factor when I'm going to um, come to a conclusion whether or not people are supposed to buy the stock or sell it and so on. Uh, because a company that doesn't have any customers, well, um, it doesn't really have much value, to be fairly honest. So even though uh, um, we find a cure for the coronavirus, I think the damage that this virus has done uh, to the reputation of all of these companies and so on, that is something that's going to last for quite a long time. I think that people are going to be very, very to go on one of these cruise ships, even though we find a cure today or in the near future. Um, and also, 
because that most of the customers that buy tickets uh, for these um, cruises are uh, seniors, which are the most uh, technically the group that is uh, in danger of um, of uh, of this virus. So at the moment, this is a fantastic. This was a fantastic. Um, product at the moment i just don't see that this industry will will uh, regain um, its pride and glory anytime soon and it will take a long time before they ever get back to the same level as prior to the coronavirus so Let's look at this stock's performance the last uh, a few weeks or also months. So this used to be a stock that traded around 51, uh, at the 51 level, or just about 50. Uh, when the uh, coronavirus hit and all this bad news uh, from the Diamond Princess and so on um, came out, we saw this stock absolutely plummet. And it went down all the way to $7 within just a few a uh, few weeks. Since then, this stock has been extremely volatile. And it's probably one of the reasons why, why it has been so popular for scalpers and uh, day traders and so on. Because we have seen this stock increase and decrease uh, by, by 10, 15, even 20% at some, in some days. Um, and people have earned and lost thousands and millions on basically trading this stock. We can see that uh, in the pre-market today, it's already down by minus 7. Uh, and it's been up to minus 8 and so on. Um, at the moment, it's trading uh, at twenty no, $19 um, uh, per share. So the last 52 weeks, it has been trading from uh, from... Um, seven dollars around seven eight dollars to fifty one fifty two dollars per share the p re ratio for this stock is a seven which is fairly low uh, it's fairly cheap stock to buy and yahoo finance um, values this stock at as significantly undervalued however i truly disagree with that evaluation and I'll come to my conclusion at the end of this video. If we compare the um, Carnival Cruise stock to the S&P 500, we can see that the performance of the S&P 500 has been significantly better uh, than that of the Carnival Cruise. This stock has, for the last two years, been trading at lower lower levels so even at its um, well time best times when it was actually making a lot of money the stock was still um, trading lower and lower and you can see now it has absolutely plummeted and i cannot imagine it going up to uh, previous levels anytime soon So let's look at Carnival Cruises finances. So the cruise industry is a really profitable industry and Carnival Cruise has actually been making money the last few years. Uh, 2019 was quite a good year for Carnival Cruise. Uh, as you can see, that revenue is quite stable and, and income is also quite stable. Uh, they have, uh, in 2019, had a net profit. However, 2020 is going to be completely different. This company is at the moment burning through cash at a record pace. Um, and the reason for that is that they have no income. They just don't have any customers at the moment. There is no zero money coming into this company. They are just burning through cash. Um, but this company has a lot of ships. They have a lot of assets. In um, in 2020, in the beginning of 2020, they had around 60 
uh, no, uh, 46 uh, billion in assets. And their total equity was um, $24 billion. So if they come, if they get into real trouble, they can use these assets. They can sell their ships or use them as collateral in order to, uh, to, uh, to borrow money. But there is the current ratio that is really, really low. So this ratio shows basically this ability, the company's ability to pay back short, uh, short-term debts. And this ratio should be um, at one or there above in order to, to basically show whether or not this company is uh, able to pay back its debt. And Carnival Cruise's current ratio is 0.27. This indicates that investment in this company is a really, really, really risky. This just screams for value investors don't put money into this company because we have no idea whether or not this company will survive because it's not capable at the current moment to pay back its debts. So... In the start of this crisis, Carnival Cruise had around uh, $500 million in cash. They have raised additional $4 billion uh, in bond, uh, than bond sales that been mature in 2023. Uh, but the yield on this bond sale was 11.5%. And that is an enormous cost uh, compared to what they paid only a year before, nearly a year before, when they uh, paid 1% for 600 million euros in the European debt market. Subsequently, they had to use their ships as collateral to attract bond investors. So this just screams that this company is in big trouble. They are just trying to get as much cash as possible in order for in order to survive. Uh, they have also increased. Uh, they also raised 1.75 uh, billion uh, for a 5.75 percent. Um, also, really, really in, uh, expensive. So, in order for this company to technically survive. It has to have capital. It has to have cash to pay off its debt uh, because they have no money coming in at the moment and they're paying an enormous price in order to get their hands on this, on this, um, on this money. And at the moment, they are burning through $1 billion every month. Every month, because no money coming in, it's technically just money out the window. And $1 billion, they're burning through every single month. So if we look, l- listen to the, the experts, which we basically should, um, they estimate a vaccine in the earliest to be ready in one year to 18 months. And that is not a difficult calculation to make. That means that they will burn through around 12 to 18 billion dollars before a vaccine is available. And even then, if we say that it, it would take one year, then we'll, they will burn through 12 billion dollars. They'll burn through their entire cash and even more, they have to raise even more than that. Um, they have to get customers back. And that will take a long time in order to get back to the levels that they were prior to the coronavirus. This is a absolutely incredibly risky investment if you want to want to invest in this company, and that is probably the reason why the stock has been so volatile. It has been amazing for uh, scalpers and day traders. Uh, for value investors, uh, I don't, I don't see the value here at all. 
Now, we're going to look at the technical analysis for, for Carnival Cruise. So as you can see that we had this massive decline in the beginning, uh, in the end of January, and we bottomed uh, around mid-April. Uh, since then, we had had a quite turbulent time. Uh, this has been a really volatile stock. But we need to go far back to analyze this company because even when this company was making money, the stock was still in a decline. It has been a decline since uh, 2008, January 2008, where it reached a peak of uh, $72.32. And, uh, and it has been in a declining uh, it's been climbing ever since until we got to January 2020 where everything fell apart. So just to keep in mind, even though when this company was earning money, the stock was still declining. It has been declining for a very, very long time. So we are today in, in June and, um, and we had a peak in this um, stock uh, back in uh, sixth of um, eight of June, where it reached at twenty five dollars, and the Bavarians, why it reached twenty five dollars when you have uh, zero revenue is beyond me. I have that it makes absolutely no sense. Why in the world when you don't have a product, uh, something would basically uh, increased in value? But if you look at the technical, why did we? Get up here, and why did we basically go back down so uh, so quickly? And uh, we take the Fibonacci retracement, and we go all the way to the lowest part here. We can see that when we hit the thirty-eight point two Fibonacci retracement, we uh, ran into uh, resistance, and we got a lot of sellers coming in. And basically, what was happening, and what has been happening for quite some time is that we have retail sellers, um, retailers that have bought and sold this product. And what happened here is that, well, when a, when a, um, when a stock starts uh, increasing like this with 10%, 15%, and so on, everybody wants to get, in, um, get involved and get a piece of the action. But technically what people are buying is, is nothing. There is no value at the moment because this company has no income, absolute zero income. So this is pure speculation. So other traders like Smart Money was looking at this and they were just waiting until this stock got to this price level and they then start selling. So a lot of people lost a lot of money um, when they were trading this. They were expecting this to just go to all times high, but matter of fact, that is going to take a long time before we ever see um, this stock getting back to fifty dollars, um, if it ever gets back to fifty dollars. So, if we look at the technical indicators, we see that the RSI is quite flat. Um, the same goes for for uh, MACD. And again, uh, we will probably uh, trade this stock in a side where, sideways um, for a few trading sessions. Uh, but in the long time, wrong, long run, I do expect this stock to go way, way lower. Because if you don't have a vaccine, if this company does have, an, have any income and so on, we will see absolutely horrible earnings which basically may make this stock go way 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 lower so we can see that volatility for this stock has been just through the roof the bollinger bands um it has been a really 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 volatile uh, volatile stock it has increased decreased by 10 15 20 percent for a very long time stochastic uh, indicates that this stock is um is going to trade uh, negatively for a few more trading ses sessions and probably for 
a significantly longer time. So please be careful when you trade the stock. This is not a, uh, it's not for the faint hearted. This is a uh, um, day traders, scalpers dream to trade the stock for value investors. Yeah, we'll get to that in a, in a moment. So the question is, should people buy Carnival Cruise stock? Um, and the answer is, if you are a scalper or a day trader and you're not intending to hold on to the stock and so on, then probably yes. But as a value investor, no. This is absolutely, you take an enormous risk to, um, to buy the stock for, for the long run because as you say, this company has no income. It has no customers at the moment. And we have no idea when um, the, when uh, there is going to be a vaccine and when this company is going back to anything that looks uh, normal. So I think this stock at the current moment is significantly overvalued. I would not be surprised that within a few weeks or maybe months when we uh, basically see uh, the, the income or uh, their earnings that the value of this stock will basically decline significantly. Investors will basically drop this um, stock and we will be looking at a stock that goes to 15, 10, uh, retest the lows of 7, and then go to five and probably even lower than that. I don't really see how the, uh, this industry will bounce back any time soon. And this goes for all of the cruise line stocks. For example, Norwegian cruise lines and also Royal Caribbean and the, all the other cruise line stocks. Um, I picked the company that I thought had the best uh, chance of surviving and and so on. So, yeah. For value investors, this is not something, uh, not a stock that I would buy and so on. So, hope you all like this video. Uh, if you want to, you're welcome to support our channel by subscribing and uh, good luck.